Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is our 33rd lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the previous lesson, we covered the fundamental theories of sleeves. In today's lesson, we're going to apply all of that knowledge and bring it together to base the sleeves of our traditional model. Now, this lesson is extremely important. I don't care how many sleeves you've put in. If you haven't done the exercises that I gave you in the previous lesson, please do not begin this lesson until you've done them. Insight is gained when complex matters suddenly seem simple. I have simplified all these otherwise complex matters so that you would gain the insight within 10 minutes instead of 10 years, okay? Having said that, the entire purpose of this lesson is for you to master ease distribution. I don't want you to think about pitch, I don't want you to think about the hang of the sleeve, anything else but ease distribution, okay? Sounds like a good deal to me. So, this is what we're going to do. First, I'm going to recap three factors of relative length that we're going to apply on our sleeves today, along with three additional ones on handling them. Then we're going to finish the sleeves by putting them around the armhole, securing them and all of that. And last but not least, we're going to go through the evaluation. You ready? Let's begin. As we approach our sleeves, we're going to deal with three factors of relative length that I've covered in separate lessons with you. Those are opposing curves, shape by angle, and gathers. Now, one of the reasons why people struggle with understanding sleeves and learning them is because none of these are actually articulated as separate concepts. It becomes tacit knowledge. People will tell you, you just have to do a lot of sleeves to understand it. Now, if you put sleeves in for like 10 years, intuitively, you would understand these things. But it's much better if you have them as clear, separate concepts standing on their own. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to encounter when putting in your sleeves is going to be opposing curves. As you place your top sleeve against your armhole, right side to right side, the first thing that you're going to notice is that the armhole curve is going in one direction and the top sleeve curve is going in another direction. As you try to force these lines together, surplus is created on the top sleeve. However, that surplus does not create volume per se. Volume is created through shape by angle. Most of shape by angle happens during the pattern cutting phase. But this is essentially what happens with our sleeves. If you place your top sleeve on the armhole, on a flat pattern, you'll notice that the top sleeve is bigger. This overlap is marked as the red sections. Now, your undersleeve does the opposite. Instead of having an overlap, it has actually a gap. Whether it's a gap or an overlap, we saw that if you try to force two shapes together that have either a gap or an overlap between them, volume is created, okay? Now, when volume is created, of course, you need to make sure that that's very smoothly distributed. That brings us to the gather domain. Now, when you're dealing with gathers, you can do multiple things. You could do a fade in and out, so you start with very little gathers, and then you increase that, and then you fade off again. You can do it very inconsistently if you're not experienced or you haven't practiced a lot. You can do it very consistently, the same amounts from the beginning to the end, or you can leave some areas just flat, okay? So when we put our sleeves in, all these three factors are going to be happening all at once. Now, to get all of this right, you need to handle the jacket, the armhole and the sleeve well. So here are three points that you must imprint in your mind and remember forever on how to handle sleeves and armholes. Let's have a look. Rule number one, though shall not just randomly push fabric in. What do I mean by that? So imagine this is your armhole and this is your sleeve and you want to base these together. You're not just gonna you know, go around and just push fabric around, okay? There is a method to this. This method at least works with nature instead of against it and you can rely on it pretty much 80% of the time. What are you going to do? When you place your sleeve against your armhole, you're going to baste with a distance of 3 eighths. So let's say this is your starting point, you've done a back tack, 
Now you want to continue basting and controlling the ease. What are you going to do? Well, since your next bite is going to be three eighths in front of the previous one, in this area, you're going to try to bring the edge of the sleeve here to the edge of the armhole by holding the previous bite and just moving this point over like that. Automatically, that creates pretty much the right amount of surplus and gather that you need for that shape. Now, it's not going to be always 100% accurate because you might have drafted a very weird sleeve, but if all the shapes are harmonized together correctly, you will be very close to perfection with that. So instead of just randomly pushing all around, you will bring the area in which you're going to put your next bite over to the edge. That creates a surplus and that's that. Rule number two, thou shall always baste over the surplus. In other words, your surplus should be trapped between two bites. So imagine this is my starting point. I hold this in my hand. I bring this over. I create my surplus. Okay, my next bite should be over the surplus. You see the surplus here? Over it. I cannot emphasize this enough. So when you put your bite in, that surplus is trapped. What you should not do is to create your surplus. So bring this over and then, you know, based on top of it, like go with the needle on top of it or even worse, underneath it like that. Why is this a problem? It's a problem because when you fold your sleeve over and you want to kind of like allow it to hang, your ease is not going to be distributed correctly and held in place. It's going to go all over, uh, all around, and you're not going to be able to control it, okay? So that's that. Now, rule number three, probably the most important of all these rules that I just told you. You shall always move the jacket as you are basting. I do not want to see you stand like this when you're basting your sleeves or like this or like that. It's nonsense. You're going to kill your neck, your shoulders, your back, everything. Concentration gone means quality of work gone, okay? So every time you're working on a section, remind yourself that you should be in this position sewing a horizontal line, okay? There's no point or reason for you to be like this or to like this or to like this. All right, keep your posture professional. So every time you go around, instead of you moving around with the seam, keep moving and rotating the jacket as you go. All right, so now that we know all of this, let's actually put the actual jacket sleeve to the armhole. Grab your jacket. The first thing that we're gonna do is to highlight our front pitch and our back pitch. Where is our front pitch? Well, if you look at the chest line mark stitches right here, the one horizontal line above it, right where we have the edge of our armhole and the inlay, that's where our front pitch is. So grab a sharp chalk and draw a line through those mark stitches, like so. Now, you may get confused and think that the edge of our armhole is this basting, but if you remember, that basting is just there because we have nothing else to baste on the edge. So we just basted a little bit lower to prevent uh, any type of stretching from happening. Now, what I want you to do is to, from this edge, take a seam off. That's about 3 eighths, which is one centimeter. So mark that. Do not mark from this basting, okay? It has to be from the edge of the armhole. Once you've done that, that's your front pitch marked. You can do the same on the other side. I will first do the left sleeve, because I'm right-handed, it's usually easier to put the left sleeve in if you're right-handed, but if you're left-handed, it probably is easier to start with this side. Once I've done the front pitch, I will flip the jacket over to mark the back pitch. Now, again, if you look at the jacket, we have two horizontal lines. The one that's closer to the chest line is only indicating the top of the side seam. We need the one above it, the one that is closer to the shoulder line, all right? So, Go ahead, mark a line through those mark stitches, like so, and then from your run, measure inwards a seam, that's a centimeter 
which is about 3 8 and now you've also marked your back pitch. So, time to do the same on our sleeves. I want you to lay your jacket horizontally in front of you, like this. Now, you need to make sure you've got the right sleeve. I don't want you to take the right sleeve and try to put it in the left side of the armhole. That's not going to happen, okay? So, when you take your sleeves, you have to be able to put the sleeve on the jacket, as I'm doing, like so, and it should already match that side, okay? So, once you've got your sleeve, put this over, position the sleeve so that you can see your front pitch, that's the one right above the chest line. Again, mark a line through that, and then from your sleeve run, mark inwards three eighths. Once that's done, flip it over, and now you're looking at the hindarm seam. Measure from your sleeve run, three eighths downwards, so that you create an intersection with your hindarm seam, okay? This is the point that will have to match your back pitch. Now that you've done it, you're ready to base the sleeves. Listen to me carefully before we begin. Putting sleeves in is not as easy as just a straight seam like we did with the side seams or the shoulders. Despite the fact that I've accurately cut these sleeves and put the pitch marks exactly where they should be, you still have to do some ease distribution yourself. Ease distribution partially relies on good technique, which I will show you, but it also relies on patience and practice, okay? Now, just a disclaimer, I have cut these sleeves a little bit bigger than they will be in the final results. Why did I do that? For two reasons. First of all, I want you to absolutely have to deal with ease. If I cut the sleeves too net, you're just going to base them in without any fullness, and that's going to be very easy, but you're not going to learn anything. So this forces you to deal with that ease distribution. The second reason is I want you to know how to make a sleeve that's too big slightly smaller without messing it up, okay? So if you're ready, let's begin. Take your jacket and position it exactly as I have in front of you. Take your sleeve and position the sleeve right side to right side against the armhole, okay? Now I want you to take a pin and pin the intersecting line that you created, that intersecting point which was a seam off from your front pitch, match that to the intersection you created here on the front pitch of the armhole. So that point has to match exactly and when you do that your sleeve run right here will be aligned with the edge of the armhole okay so put a pin through that then flip your sleeve over to make sure that this is matching so at the moment it's matching but i could go up about a millimeter or two so i will do that still could do it that's better okay now while there are tolerances of a millimeter up or a millimeter down, you want to be as accurate as you can so that if something goes wrong, you don't have to go through an entire list of all the things that are off. So the fewer things that are off, the easier you can find the solution to what's actually wrong, okay? So eventually when the sleeve hangs, we have a mark here. This indicates where the arm, the forearm, should be located. So if you put your sleeve correctly and it hangs from the jacket, this fold line should be aligned with this mark stitch. And as I described in the theory of sleeves, this line is based on essentially the most forward point of the armhole. That's how almost every human being has that orientation between the armhole and the sleeve. That's a universal position for almost every human being um, that doesn't have a severe disfiguration or whatsoever. Once you've done that, it's time to baste. Thread your needle, make a knot, and please make sure that your thread is long enough. The worst thing is sleeves basted in with 10 pieces of short threads. When you're at a fitting, you want to unpick one or two points and pull the thread out smoothly, okay? You don't want to have 20 points of back tags and stuff. So make sure you have a nice long piece of thread. Then, this is very important, you will have to lay the sleeve so that your sleeve run at the bottom matches the armhole run all the way 
at the bottom where the underarm seam is okay so this point is that is the first point that i'm going to match so i'll position the sleeve make sure that my sleeve run is right on the edge of the pattern here where the underarm seam is okay once i've got that i'll put a pin in there and i'll try to hold this area like a curve with a curve over my hand okay when i do that all i want to do is to see if this run in between is aligned with the edge of the armhole and that's pretty much the case you may have to move it a little bit down or a little bit up but it seems to be almost identical okay now you should have just a tiny amount of ease right here okay so do not pull this over so that you end up with surplus on your armhole neither should you have to put in a lot of surplus here just let the cloth lay as you position the lines while bending everything over your hand now that you've done that and there is just a little bit of ease here you can start right at the bottom where the underarm seam is so take out this pin a seam off that's a centimeter below your sleeve run Take a bite, back tack once, and now we're going to baste with a stitch length of 3 8 okay? Let me put this so that you can see it. As I move forwards, I make sure that my sleeve run is aligned with the armhole edge. Be consistent with your spacing and the distance that you take from the edge as your seam allowance. Now, when you get to the front pitch, take out the pin, put in a bite, Hold the first back tack that you did, your starting point. Pull the thread so that there is no slack because you don't want your basting to be loose. And then back tack once. Okay? If you've made it so far, you're almost there. Now what I want you to do is the following. Position the sleeve so that the forearm is aligned with this pitch. This is We are doing this because we want the sleeve to be in the right orientation. Okay? then fold it over to see where your basting is bring the armhole in front of you and always hold it like this okay don't go like this and neither like this what i now want you to do is to bring over this area where you're going to put your next bite over to the armhole okay when you do that you'll notice that a little bit of surplus is created, like so, okay? Now, this surplus looks like a lot if you look at the very edge of your inlay, but that's not correct. You should look at the area where you're going to put your needle, okay? So a seam off. Otherwise, you th you're thinking you're putting a lot of fullness in there, but actually you're not. So looking at this area we have a tiny amount of ease that's created just naturally and so we're going to go ahead based over it as i explained and that's that okay now we're going to continue what i want you to do is to take the sleeve move it over so that the entire cloth in this area can lay flat and you just bring over the next run over and take a bite okay this area of your sleeve is fairly on the straight grain it's a little bit on the bias but it's mainly on the straight grain you cannot have too much surplus here however this area is very much on the bias and you can compress a lot of fullness in here so be careful that you don't put too much here you can put a little bit more here but if you just follow this method this technique that i'm showing you the distribution should happen automatically, okay? So, let's continue. Again, bring this area that you're going to put your needle in over to the armhole, and it creates a tiny amount of surplus right here, and we're going to just baste over that. And what I'm going to do now, from now on, every three or four stitches that I put in, I'll hold a little bit further back, pull the thread to make sure that the basting is not loose okay and every time i want to put in the next bite i hold the last bite move everything over match and continue all right now you'll notice that my hands are starting to turn at this point 
rotate the jacket so you're back in your horizontal position and now you're going to continue and here you'll notice that the surplus becomes bigger because the curves are more severe and the angle is at the farthest point uh, from a pattern cutting shape by angle perspective again hold the last bite bring the sleeve over so it's not pulling anything you should easily be able to match everything okay bring it over again baste over it now one indicator for good ease distribution is if you can compress it flat with your fingers it's pretty much a good sign but if you run with your fingers over it and it starts to pleat so you have something like this you can never compress this flat with your fingers then that's probably too much moving over again making sure this area is flat bring this over and continue now as you get to the shoulder seam you may wonder should this pitch right at the top of the sleeve match the shoulder seam the answer is no the reason why we have this top pitch mark on the top sleeve is because first of all if we want to ever reduce or increase the crown shape we know where the highest point of the sleeve is but also this at the same time indicates where the highest point of the shoulder is okay the shoulder seam is not always on the highest point so don't try to match these two together. You can, of course, always cut your sleeve so that it does match, but in this case, it's not that. So when I get to the shoulder seam, I back tack once, hold the back, everything, pull, back tack once, and now it's time to flip everything inside out. So what do I do? I put my hands in the shoulders, I hold the sleeves, I hold my needle, I flip everything inside out and I make sure that I position everything really well in front of me so that the jacket is not completely twisted and under pressure and strain and all of that so you really want to position this as if it's a flat seam okay don't hold it up too far in the air just let it rest so that you can work without any strain on your neck or shoulders and we will continue but before we continue we're going to pin our back pitch find your back pitch on the body of the jacket we have that intersection here we also have the intersection on the hindarm seam those two intersections should match okay and you're going to put a pin right there perpendicular to the sleeve run why because if you put your needle in parallel to the sleeve run you cannot get close and put fullness because the pin is in the way okay but this way you can get all the way to the very end so now we can see how much surplus we have here of course this probably is a lot as i already explained but we are going to do our best to distribute it as good as we can have a look and then fine tune what we distributed continue with the same method as i described bring over the runs together to create that surplus that automatically occurs now when you get to the very top of the sleeve you should not put a lot of surplus it should almost be flat okay so here i will manually push the fullness in just a tiny amount and here all of this i will try to slowly fade in and distribute now you may at some point not be able to bring the runs together anymore to create automatic distribution of ease so you have to manually push the cloth in no matter what happens and where you end with how much surplus do not allow your front pitch or back pitch to move downwards or upwards okay this is a very bad habit that tailors develop in workshops when they put in a sleeve that's cut incorrectly and then they try to fix it by moving the back pitch up or the back pitch down the reality is the back pitch and the front pitch should always stay on the same place but the shape of the sleeve has to change or its width or its height okay so if there's too much surplus don't release your pin just trap the surplus there even if it becomes a pleat you go ahead base the rest and then redistribute everything i'll show you how to do that okay so here we can do a little bit more ease because again this is an area that's highly on the bias so i can just press these areas flat with my fingers and maybe you know it's not really a bad distribution after all 
So what do you do if you get this? Okay, well, it's very simple. I'll just baste over it, even if it turns into a pleat, and back tack on the back pitch area. Okay, and I'll go back to that and fine tune that later. So now you can take the pin out, reposition the jacket. Look at how I do it. Please repeat after me. Don't work with a lumpy piece of jacket in front of you. All right. So before you continue basting, I want you to take the under sleeve and just flat match it against the armhole run. Go all the way down to see how much surplus you're dealing with. OK, the very bottom. So this is your side body run. The very bottom of your armhole should be flat. You can have the tiniest amount of ease, but it really should be flat. Most of it should be here, okay? So if you see that you have a lot, you should be aware where you're going to distribute that. So we have about, you know, half an inch, an inch extra here. That's probably easily distributed right here. And we're going to go ahead and do that. So holding everything up as clean as we can, I will begin to manually push cloth in to distribute the ease so that when we get to the bottom there is very little of it left this entire line is on the bias so you can put a lot of ease in there however you can't bring it over to create that automatic ease anymore okay so you have to manually push it now I'm also aware that I should create a smooth fade. So as I get towards the bottom, I ease in less and less and less. And you also may wonder, hey, why is there so much inlay on these sleeves? You know, there are some workshops, they don't put any inlay on the top sleeve or at the bottom of the under sleeve. Uh, you know, doesn't this mean that you don't know what you're doing or whatever? Um, no, the reason why you need sleeves to have inlays around the top sleeve and the under sleeve is because if you want to make a quick change to the crown shape or the or the sleeve depth you can very quickly do that without having to unpick the entire sleeve recut it you know shift the pattern up and down and so it makes your work more effective you just need to be willing to pay a little bit more for fabric so because you're going to need more fabric and to learn how to handle that inlay but other than that um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And once we are at the bottom, we have nothing anymore. So we can back tack three times and that's it. Okay. So now we're going to have a look. I will flip the sleeve and the shoulder inside out, position the jacket on the table before I hold it up and pull the sleeve down. Okay. So my hand is in the shoulder area i pull the sleeve down and i'll just have a look at this area to see what's going on exactly so the ease that we have here is well distributed we don't have any puckers this area we start to get a little bit more puckers however there is a lot of inlay there so what you have to do sometimes is take your hands and really put them underneath the sleeve okay and see if you can distribute that pleat that's occurred due to the inlay into a little bit of smooth distribution so now look it's gone okay so it's not too much fullness it just turned into a pleat because there was a lot of inlay and so as you saw the end of that inlay you know the when you i'll show you so if you have a little bit of distribution here it compounds and goes all the way and turns into a lot right at the edge so if that's too much it turns into a pleat and it creates a distortion there all right so you can just get that out of the way now it's smooth even without pressing and the same goes for here you know can you smooth this out with your fingers is this just the pleating of the inlay or is it actually bad distribution this to me seems like all oh, fine here we have a little bit too much this is an obvious pleat you, you can't smooth this out okay so this is what I'm going to do. I'll keep my back pitch, which is exactly where it should be, in the same place. I'll keep my front pitch exactly in the same place. I'm going to take a new thread and start to distribute a little bit more ease towards here so that by the end, by the time I get to the end, I have less to distribute in the back area. Okay. 
And like I said, this top pitch indicates the highest point of the shoulder. It can move a little bit forwards or backwards, okay? So let's do that before we hold it up. Thread your needle, hold the jacket as it should be so that it doesn't distort anything or pull. Bring in front of you the area that you're gonna correct. And if it takes you five minutes to adjust the positioning, please spend that five minutes to adjust it and don't just start right away, okay? You need to have a good overview of the entire area that you're gonna correct. So from the bottom, our starting point, up to the front pitch, everything is fine, okay? We have a back tack here. So what I'll do is I'll start just like, you know, one or two bites behind our front pitch move upwards position the jacket as you work around the armhole put a bite right above the front pitch okay and now snip into the thread that you have use a pin to take out one or two bites okay and now what you're going to do is manual gather based on your knowledge of what the distribution was we want to end up with a little bit less at the back, so we're going to put a little bit more fullness, so to say, in this area. But you should be careful. The very area above the front pitch is still sensitive, so you can't put a lot there yet. Okay, so that's that. Now we're going to do a little bit more. And a lot of this is also dependent on memory. Can you remember how much ease you had in a given place okay i'm gonna put in a little bit more than i had previously and continue forwards now if i've already done the right thing so far i should not have a lot of ease in front of me this area should be flat now because i've taken it and i've put it down so that means i have to now take some bites out and continue with the distribution so now i will put in a little bit more I'm in that area where the sleeve is mainly on the bias, so I can get a little bit more in there. Hold your last few stitches at the end, pull your thread. This is fine. You can compress this with your finger and so the iron will do a great job at that. Rotate the jacket. Again, this is flat now, so that means we have done a good job in redistributing that ease. Now, as I approach the top of the sleeve, I will start to fade off to less and less ease to prevent any puckers right at the top of the sleeve. Okay, now if I hold this in a roll, you can see already the sleeve starts to roll if I hold this flat. So, here I put a little bit less, of course. Almost nothing here. Reposition the jacket, always reposition the jacket, and let's see if we can get this distribution perfect. Please don't be discouraged if this doesn't work out for you in the first time. This is actually one of the areas where you can put all your energy to perfect it, because the objective is clear. Distribute the cloth between two points, which is the front and the back pitch, as smoothly as you can. Everyone can do that if they sit for it. And concentrate on it okay so this is all good you know this already looks like a smooth roll without any iron work and I think we're almost there so here and that's it that is it so without even putting the jacket on or you know holding it in your arms and letting the sleeve hang and be distracted by all sorts of things you can already determine whether it should be you know redone or not based on the ease distribution so i'll do a few more stitches downwards to make sure that nothing comes loose putting a back tack there and that's that all right so one two three loose back tacks is plenty now just to recap one more thing with you we have a little bit of ease here but you can see that it turns into this big amount of surplus right at the edge okay so this is what I was talking about. Sometimes this turns into a pleat and then it gives the impression as if you've got too much distribution there, but actually it's just your inlay. And when you cut that off later at the making stage, you know, not, it's not going to affect your sleeve in any way. So 
Let's have a look. Can we go with our fingers over this ease without any pleats from happening? You can use both your fingers. Yeah, there seems to be a little bit of surplus here, which the iron can perfectly compress. But I already told you this sleeve is bigger than it's going to be in the final result. So I'm not too fussy about that. You can also push the roll of the cloth in there. See if it turns into a smooth roll. And ideally, if you've done a good distribution, you should already get a smooth roll without any ironing. So this seems almost uh, as good as it can get. OK, so let's hold this in our hands and check out exactly what we're dealing with. OK, so. Flip this over. Make sure you take away all those pleats and everything is smooth as it can be so for example here we have a pleat you might think that's too much ease there but it's just inlay and every seam allowance that you have has to be pushed towards the sleeves okay so when you hold this up you have the pad and all the fabrics of the shoulder and the sleeve has to just lay smoothly you shouldn't have the seam allowances curled up in there uh, or, or, or anything else okay so I get there in I hold the pad back and then I do this you know push the fabric out and then let the pad sit back there again so that everything is is there so you, you see this this is now almost turning inwards and I have to pull the cloth outwards allow it to lay in okay like so so let me hold this in my hands and have a look there are five points that I want you to keep in mind and get right before you put the jacket on and evaluate your sleeves or even when you're evaluating the sleeves without putting the jacket on, okay, just on your hand. The first one is seam positioning. Now, there is a lot going on here. So as you hold this up, one of your seams or your canvas might be twisted or folded back. So what you have to do is to get everything out of the way. How do you do that? Well. Let me turn the jacket and show you from this side. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull the pad away and push the canvas with your fingers outwards. OK, once the canvas is out of the way all around, you're going to grab the canvas and the pad and push the seams of your sleeve and your armhole outwards again all around. OK, once you've done that. And so I'm going to do that right here canvas out of the way okay that's all very smooth and now fabric out of the way okay all around that's smooth once you've done that the area right in front of the sleeve seam has to be flat and smooth okay if it looks like it's pulling back or something is distorting it you have to make sure that nothing is twisted there or folded back okay it could also be that when you were basting your sleeves the inlay of your shoulder seam was trapped in a weird way so everything has to be smooth and flat okay so point number two how are you going to hold the sleeve to correctly evaluate it you should never evaluate a sleeve just by holding it up you should always try it on as well but before putting both sleeves in you might want to have a look and see what's going on so you have to hold the entire thing correctly how do you do it remember how we evaluated our shoulder seams we put our hands like this put the seam on our flat palm and then let everything hang and have a look we're not going to do that we're going to do another grip we're going to do this crab movement okay so like this this goes into the shoulder now my four fingers are around the back pitch area. My thumb is in the upper four part of the shoulder. And that allows me to spread the sleeve open. Now I'm going to spread the sleeve open, not for it to get tight like this, but for it to just sit relaxed and flat. But neither should it be compressed like this. Okay, so pretend as if the shoulders are really filling this area up. Now, when you do that, the chest line has to be parallel to the floor. OK, that's how you hold the jacket so that you can correctly evaluate the sleeves. Second, third point, your front pitch and your back pitch have to be perfectly matching. 
So if you pull your cloth over and there is a mismatch, you have to redo it. If you pull the cloth over on here and the hindarm seam of your sleeve is not going right into that back pitch, you have to redo it. Why? Because any misbalance or mismatch between those two might rotate your sleeves forwards or backwards, okay? Another thing you can do is as you're holding this up correctly, is to just allow this forepart to lay flat and see if your forearm roll is aligned with the mark stitches there, okay? Now, you have to be very careful with this because depending on how you hold the shoulders, it might look too far to the front, it might look too far to the back, you look at this and think, oh, it's too far off. So never rely just solely on holding this up in the air. This is correct. I know that. But you have to always put it on and see how it is on the body. Okay. So that's point number three. Point number four is going to be the front roll of your sleeve. So when you hold this up correctly and everything is hanging, I want you to take your hand and push against this area of your sleeve. When you do that, your sleeve should just continue rolling inwards, okay? As if this roll is just one, from the top all the way to the bottom. So you see when I do that, the sleeve just naturally rolls over. What you don't want, and I'm gonna exaggerate for a second, is for you to do that and get this crap like that. That's not good, okay? Why is this point important? Well, you want the sleeves to look beautiful during movement as well, okay? And if your sleeve can just roll naturally while being pushed, then chances are that it will look still very nice when the arm slightly moves forwards or backwards, okay? So that's point number four. And now point number five is going to be the overall distribution. As I said, sometimes your surpluses, because of the inlay, might turn into pleats. Make sure when you are pushing the seam allowances away, you smooth everything out and then have a look and see if these are truly, really pleats. Now, I know that the distribution that I did is as good as it can get. Every pucker that I have here is either a result of the inlay or the fabric not being pressed. Mind you, this sleeve is a little bit bigger than it should be, okay? So if there is actually a little bit too much in there, well, you should know that, okay? Now, I'm going to press everything because I've gone through it all. Everything matches here. Everything is correct. I'm going to press everything here now and then have a look and see if everything is still as smooth as it should be. And if it's not, well, then we would redistribute the ease. And if not, we will continue to the right sleeve, okay? So, pressing. Grab your sleeve board and make sure you're using the narrow point of your sleeve board. I don't know what kind of sleeve board you have, but if you have one of those circular ones, the really big round ones, it's not going to be suitable. You need something with a narrow point, okay? So this is what you're going to do. You're going to flip the sleeve inside out and you're going to start right at the bottom, that front curve of your armhole, and you're only going to put the cloth on the sleeve board, so not the canvas, okay? Now, very important point, don't let the jacket hang from the sleeve board. You should be able to put this on the sleeve board without the jacket wanting to fall off, okay? It should not be under pressure. But at the same time, you need to have access to the entire thing. So make sure you position this and get everything carefully out of the way, all right? Now, how, how far should you go into the sleeve board? Where your basting line is, you need to have roughly a surface of half an inch flat for you to press, okay? Now, we're going to start from the inside of the sleeve and we're going to move the iron outwards, dry iron, okay? No steam, nothing wet, just dry iron, okay? Now, when you bring your iron, be careful you don't crease anything else. So, with the tip of your iron, carefully move over and flatten these areas. Once you've done a bit, you're going to reposition the entire jacket, hold this completely flat, position it, get everything out of the way, like so, and continue, okay? So, you have to manipulate the fabric, so hold and pull it slightly so it 
can't go anywhere else so that you can compress it like this slowly move forwards and you'll notice that your shoulder pad is going to be very annoying at some point because it keeps rotating the jacket see if i do this bam the shoulder pad pulls it back so you have to work around that now here there's a lot there seems to be a lot of surplus but really there isn't because it's this area that we have the ease everything else now has turned into this massive amount of surplus because it's a wider piece of fabric but you're free to pleat them as long as the pleat is not here on your sewing line now i always try not to pleat them so i try to press everything as smooth as possible like so as you get closer to the shoulder pad area it might get a little bit more difficult but if you're very careful and gentle and patient you will get through it again don't forget to rotate the entire jacket as you work around okay and these areas are very difficult sometimes with a heavy iron so a light iron is pretty good to have for these occasions see how i'm repositioning everything and notice how I'm holding and pulling the inlays so that they don't turn into pleats. And they still look like surpluses, but they definitely are not pleating. Now here you have double cloth because all the inlay is pushed towards the sleeve on the hind arm. And so maybe it becomes a little bit more difficult to press, but you should be very careful. And if you're careful, you'll get to do it without a problem. Also, the very top of the sleeve is prone to pleats because it's more on the straight grain, as I explained. So now we're moving towards the undersleeve, and the undersleeve didn't really have too much ease to distribute, and it was rolling very smoothly. So, plus the entire thing is really on the bias. It's very difficult to get it compressed. So now I have created a pleat. This happened by chance, however, I should fix it if the point of the pleat goes all the way towards my sewing line. But because it's already like three eighths away from it, I'll leave it. It's not going to hurt. And you see how I'm placing it in a curve. I'm not trying to hold it straight like this. I'm really placing it in a curve as it is around the body, which helps me to keep these areas flat. And then the very bottom, we have no ease, but nonetheless, I'll give it a quick press that's that now very carefully place your pad so that the canvas goes over it get all of this towards the canvas put your hand underneath it like so keep everything in place flip the jacket get rid of anything that's similar to a pleat and so now if you look it's a lot smoother okay let me hold this up and actually look at it properly. So I think that if your sleeves are distributed correctly around the armhole, you don't need to press it wet and completely crush the pile of your fabric to get a smooth sleeve. First of all, ideally you get a smooth sleeve without any kind of pressing because you're then sure that even the humidity in the air cannot disrupt any of that distribution or the compression. But if it happens to be the case that you have all those inlays around your top sleeve, the things that we just went through, then dry pressing should do the trick, okay? So now I did some dry pressing. I'm holding it correctly in my hands as I showed you. And if I look all around, it's pretty smooth now. So the front, the back, everything is just like a nice roll hanging. It's a full sleeve. We know that it's bigger than it should be uh, compared to the final results. But as I'm holding it up, it's a very smooth sleeve and that's going to give us a good reading on what to do when we are fitting the sleeve, okay? So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to baste around the armhole here and then talk to you about how to put in the right sleeve, all right? Let's do this. So, once we have basted our sleeves in, what we have to do is attach the fabric of the body around the armhole area to the shoulder pad and the canvas, okay? Now, 
eventually when we are finishing the sleeve we will have to sew up and down from the inside but for a base fitting all we have to do is to baste through this through all layers up to where we have our shoulder pad okay so do as i do thread your needle make a knot and double check to see whether all your seam allowances have been pushed out and the same for your canvas as well especially at the back here okay if all of that is okay the next thing you should look for is your shoulder seam now sometimes if you are struggling with putting the sleeves in maybe you've redone this like 20 times by now it might be that your front sigh is stretched out so much that it's distorting this shoulder seam and that the end of this shoulder seam is now being forced back in that case you will have to grab that shoulder seam pull it forwards back to where it should be and maybe that gives you a little bit of surplus here but that's okay if it's a little bit because it shouldn't be going backwards okay but if that's the case that's what you do okay and and if that's that then you're good to go so start at the bottom hold your hand underneath this area and about an eighth away maybe even less two millimeters away put your bite through the canvas make a back tack and continue just clear very gently with your hands you don't have to hold the jacket in the air or allow the weight of the sleeve to pull everything over you don't have to put any tension in any of these areas when you're doing this so just make sure that this is all clear and keep basting my stitch length is 3 8 do not pull your stitches too tight neither should they be loose but definitely not too tight so hold this in a curve now so it's not flat anymore okay this is now bent around my hands in a curve and I'm not pulling anything, I'm not clearing the fabric, I'm not pulling nothing. Just make sure that you're basting through the entire canvas and pad. And as you get closer to the pad and the canvas, make sure that they are positioned correctly, all right? You know, there are tailors who think that the more you pull this, the more structure you're putting in there. But that's uh, uh, as far away from the truth as it can get. So no distortions no tension nothing okay just clear everything out baste through the canvas and the pad and if it gets really too difficult for you to do this make sure you're using the right needle that's a needle number five or if it's still too difficult just go in pull the needle out from inside and then push it back out and do it like that and at all times make sure that the jacket is in front of you you are comfortable none of your seam allowances or your canvas are folded back so i'm not putting any tension anywhere okay rotate the jacket now here this is an area where some of you might get confused because there is no canvas here you only have the shoulder pad what you have to do and be careful about is that you don't pull the fabric here outwards now, fortunately, we have the pad already in place, so you can't really do a lot of that, but you should not distort this grain by pushing it out and bulging it outwards. It should just be as flat as it is now, all right? And get as much pad as possible. And that's where our pad ends. So that's where we would do one, two, three back tacks, all right? never pull your thread too tight don't crush the shoulder shape and so now the cloth is secured against the canvas okay so let's continue to our right sleeve if you are left-handed you're probably going to find it easier to begin with the right sleeve because you can work like this and you can start from the front moving your way all the way to the top and to the back but if you're right-handed it's going to be a bit awkward what I don't want you to do is to try to work from the front to the back and hold your hands like this, okay? You're never going to do that. I never want you to do that ever, okay? This is very inefficient working 
It's not professional sewing and you're going to destroy your arms, your shoulders, your neck and everything, okay? So what are we going to do? Well, this is what we're going to do. First, we're going to mark our pitch marks and a seam off just like we did with the other side. So we have the front pitch. We have the back pitch. And we're going to do the same on the right sleeve. Front pitch, hind arm seam, intersecting with the sleeve run. That's the seam off. And then we're going to pin the right sleeve on the front pitch. So intersecting point of sewing line and pitch mark goes together. Double check to see if it's pinned well. So that matches well. Then you're going to rotate the jacket along as you do this. You're going to move towards the bottom of the armhole where the underarm seam is. Hold the fabric over your fingers as a curve and align the bottom of your under sleeve run to the edge of your fabric at the underarm seam like so. Holding this in a curve gives a little bit of ease in this area, which is not going to translate into fullness, but it literally is going to give a little bit of room to that sleeve so that it's not tight. So once you have a good match, when this line is matching the edge of your armhole, you can put a pin in there. Okay, so front pitch is pinned, curve over the hand, the bottom of the armhole and the sleeve, our matching runs, okay, all of that. And then I want you to take your back pitch mark and match that to the back pitch as well. Again, the intersecting points is what you're looking for. And the runs match as well. And you're going to put a pin in there perpendicular to the run of the sleeve, like so, okay? Now, this is very awkward to sew. You can't sew like this. So... You're going to turn the entire armhole inside out. You're going to position the jacket as comfortably as you can, starting from the bottom of the armhole. This is the bottom. The front pitch is here somewhere. Okay, so you're going to start from the bottom, thread your needle and work your way from the bottom towards the back to the front keeping in mind the areas that we brought some fullness and distributed it as we did with the left sleeve, okay? So the very bottom of the armhole doesn't have any ease. And if you look at it from this side, once you get midway the side body side, you're going to start introducing a little bit of ease on the sleeve, of course, until you get to the back pitch and then a little bit over the top, not very much, almost flat, and then again, quite a lot on the upper front side and then going back into very little to the front pitch, okay? Exactly the same distribution as you did on the other side. Now, one thing I really want to emphasize is if you are serious about learning tailoring and you want to do this as a professional, please train yourself to sew with both hands as comfortably as you can, okay? You really don't want to have a handicap as a professional. If you know how to sew with your left hand, it doesn't matter which sleeve you start with, and you can always treat both sides exactly the same. You don't have to make a change in the way you handle the garment or approach the entire distribution, and it's all a lot easier. Long-term investment, okay? But if you're doing this for fun and you just don't have time to practice and do all of that, then it's okay to use this method because it's perfectly valid. So I'm going to take the pin out while I hold everything in place. Back tack once with a knot. And our distribution is going to begin as soon as we have passed this very bottom base of the armhole. And remember, this basting here is not the line that we are following. It's the edge of the armhole, okay? Our inlay starts somewhere here, and from where the inlay starts, we begin following our armhole run, which is marked with the fabric, okay? Make sure you position the jacket 
properly at all times, mimic what I do. The jacket is away from me. It's not in front of me. And all I have to focus on is this, as if I have a mini table here that I can put this on and start sewing, okay? So slowly, now that I'm midway the side body sigh, I will begin to introduce a little bit of ease. Like so, based over it. And I know that as I get towards the back pitch, I have to increase the amount that I distribute. You can, if you want, just run with your hands all the way to that point, see how much you have there, and then gauge roughly how much you have to distribute in order to have a fade in to whatever there. You don't have to stop here with ease. So this is not a zero point, okay? You're going to have ease here because you're going to continue towards the rest of the sleeve. But you have to do it slowly and calculate it. A little bit more and a bit more and a bit more. Now, the more sleeves you put in, the more you practice the handling and the principles that I've taught you, the easier it is to get that distribution perfect or close to perfect right from the first time you go around the armhole. But sometimes you have to go over it and fine tune it a few times. So don't be upset if it doesn't work out for you the first time. Okay, so now we have a little bit of ease right up to the pin. This is our back pitch now. I'm going to put a back tag here, remove the pin, and work my way forwards. Again, reposition the jacket. You should stay like this at all times. Don't rotate with the jacket. Clear the way. Make sure you can see what you're doing, where you're going. And now we can begin. We know that this part of the sleeve is fully on the bias, so we can distribute quite a lot of ease there and if we just follow the method I just showed you by bringing that over and allowing the distribution to take care of itself as much as possible then you should be fine but it's good to know that you're in an area where you can just place a little bit extra ease more than maybe the natural distribution allows and if you can compress it with your finger then you can definitely compress it with the iron. And now as I get towards the top of the sleeve, I will reduce the amount of ease that I put there because the area that's on the straight grain is not going to take up that ease well and it's going to turn into pleats. Still distributing, but very little. And always look at the place where you put your needle. So don't look at the edge of the inlay, as I mentioned. So I can easily flatten this with my finger, you see. So I know that this distribution is not excessive and maybe I should put in a little bit more. Be careful that you catch the inlays of your shoulders neatly so you don't have a twist or a fold back here. It can happen when you're focused on one line and one thing. And we're moving towards the front. Again, position the jacket so that everything is laying as if on a mini table in front of you. The pad and the canvas, everything is flat and you can easily bend it over your hand in a curve and away we go. Again, I can compress this with my fingers. Make sure your stitching is not too loose. Don't pay attention to this inlay here. It's going to look like a lot of surplus, but it's not. And one of the important reasons why you should always hold the last bite is so that when you push, you can exactly see how much you're trapping. If I don't have this, this can easily move over to the other parts, and then I think it's a little, but when I pull the thread, it turns into 20 pleats or so. So now I know that I'm getting close to the front pitch, and I will try to fade off into nothing, and then see how the distribution is. Now this is a very important part, I have to make sure I get that very correctly distributed because otherwise I'll get a very weird blip in the front of the sleeve. So it should be free of tension. And I'm talking specifically about this very front curve of the armhole. That's the area that we need to get right. So once you get to the bottom, back tack once. Back tack twice, and since I'm over the first back tack, that's going to be sufficient. Let's have a look and see whether our distribution is done 
properly. The first thing we're going to do is to make sure that we get all these pleats that are formed by the excess inlay out of the way. So we're going to smooth them out to ensure that they are laying flat, okay? If you are in a situation whereby whatever you do, you cannot get rid of the pleats, but you can get rid of them individually, it means that you probably have to go with over the distribution with the iron to keep everything flat. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have too much distribution, but you have to assess that once you've tried to flatten all the other areas. So for example, here, it seems like I have a little bit too much, even though I can flatten it with my finger. As I'm looking at this, I can see that there is very little here, and I can bring a little bit of this down, because obviously it shouldn't be like this. Now, even though the sleeve is too big, I don't make it an excuse to just get away with, you know, crap. So I'll try to distribute it as much as possible to know what the limits are of the fabric, and then I will look at whether I'm going to recut the sleeves or whatever. But if you have something like this, or maybe yours is here, whatever, try to get it all very evenly distributed. A little bit too much here, maybe I can bring it down so that at least there are less pleats or puckers here, and maybe a little bit more here uh, without it showing as a pucker. And on the back, I think that this seems fine. Perhaps a little bit of distribution from here to here will give me some space to bring some from here to here. And then at the back, everything is fine. And also, since the pitch marks are matching as good as they can, I'm not going to change the position. Okay, so keep those pitch marks exactly where they are. Just distribute as good as you can between them. And then we're going to hold it up and evaluate. Okay, so. I want my back pitch to stay exactly where it is. I already have a back tack there, so with my new thread, I'm going to start a little bit further back with a knot in there. Put a back tack there, so when I snip the thread from here, it doesn't unravel downwards. Make a new back tack on the back pitch mark. And now, I have to be intentional with what I'm going to do. So I already knew that I have a little bit too much on the front here and not enough at the bottom. So I need to remove some of that. Where does that go? Well, it can't go further back because I already had a lot to the back. So I'm going to bring some of this downwards. Maybe an easy way to do this is to say, hey, from this point onwards, I need a little bit more down. So I'll just push wherever this is, as I have basted it, down, put a pin in there, maybe by, you know, five millimeters, whatever. So now I know that whatever I distribute between this pin and the back pitch is going to be good. And then when I get to the bottom, I can say, well, this was all too much. Some of it has to come back. So I'll snip a little bit between the points that I want to distribute move that a little bit lower, put a pin in there. And so now I have made some of the adjustments. You can see the front now has a little bit more, which I should distribute going down. And whatever I have here, I should try to distribute as much as I can. And whatever I have here, I should try to distribute as much as I can as well. Okay, so I'm going to fine tune this as I go and then evaluate it again. Now, another tip that I can give you when you're distributing ease is don't hold this too much in a curve and then push even more cloth. When you're holding this in a curve, you are already putting ease in there due to relative layer length. The top layer is always longer than the layer underneath if you're holding it in a curve. So instead, try to hold everything flat and then push in the amount that you think you need so that you know that that is the amount that's going to be there, okay? If I do the same in a curve, I already have some ease. Look, when I flatten it, there is some ease. Now imagine I do this and I push a little bit on top. I'm going to end up with a lot of fullness trapped there. So always keep it flat and only hold it in a curve in areas where you actually don't intend to put a lot of ease, okay? Because that holding in a curve will automatically distribute a little bit of fullness there for you.
So now this area is completely flat, but that's good news because here I, I seem to have a little bit too much. So I can remove this pin and say whatever I'm distributing has to be between my finger now and the pin, knowing that the top has very little ease distributed there. Very little, almost flat. Keep your basting stitches small so that your thread holds everything well together. And so now here I know I can put a little bit more because this area of the sleeve is on the full bias, but I still have to be careful. Now also, if you put the left sleeve in and it went very easily, or you put the right sleeve in and it was all very easy, it doesn't mean that the other sleeve is going to be exactly the same because naturally the two armholes are drawn in by hand, they are fabric that may stretch or shrink because of the heat of the iron differently compared to the other side. And so there are all these tiny factors that could contribute to a slight difference in both measure and shape uh, between the two sleeves. All right, so this seems a lot better. I am distributing all of this, so this doesn't seem like too much now. It looks a lot more even and neater than what it was. Now we're going to make our way towards the front. I'm going to take this pin out, reposition the jacket, make everything lay comfortable and smooth. Just make sure that the front pitch stays exactly where you basted it. So if you have undone your basting, you can put a pin in there in case the thread comes out. So now this already looks like too much, but it may not be. So I'll have a look when I'm getting down to the bottom here. Yeah, that's definitely too much. So I'm going to move back a few stitches, distribute a little bit more there. So I have less when I end up at the bottom. So that seems to be a little bit better now. I don't have as much at the bottom here, but I do have plenty for it to create a roll. All right, I can move a few stitches down, remove the previous baste, and put in my new back tack. One, two, three. So now I'll have a look at it again, and if I see that it's too close and it's gonna be very difficult to assess whether I need a millimeter here and there, I'm going to dry press all around the armhole and the areas that stay as puckers I will see where I can distribute them. Because sometimes an area looks like it has a lot, but as soon as you go over it with the iron, it goes flat and you can put a little bit more there. So it helps to use the iron to compress a little bit as you go after like a round or two of distribution so that you can do the final distribution with some of the areas already compressed by the iron. So let's have a look. So there seems to be a little bit too much here, but instead of going back and redistributing everything like a mad person, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this dry, see how much this compresses smooth, how much this compresses smooth, and if then I still have a pucker here, I can decide whether this should go a little bit higher or lower. But your pitch marks should stay the same place. Now, I think everything on the back here is good. I think one run through it with the iron, given that the sleeves are too big or bigger than they should be, um, I don't think that's going to be presenting that much of an issue. One thing, I noticed that the basting here is starting to become loose. So if that happens to you as well, make sure that you quickly put that in place or run a baste through it so that it doesn't come undone before you are finished with your work, like so. Let's run it through the iron. We're going to press it exactly the same way as we did the left sleeve, starting from the center, moving outwards towards the edges. Why do we do that? Well, this, first of all, allows us to position the jacket around the curve of the sleeve board so that we can start from the middle. This is where the ease is and then get everything flat further towards the edges. If you start from the edges working inwards, you may start to make pleats before you really need to have pleats there, and that's going to impact the smoothness of your roll in a negative way. So it's easier to start from the center and work your way outwards. 
do it with care and patience. So already I can see, putting this on the sleeve board, I could have had a little bit of this higher, but the iron will distribute some of this, it will make the smoothness equal, and then you can go through it with another cleanup stitch if you want, and if it's necessary, uh, to kind of like get everything perfect. But for now, as long as the sleeves are in there and they are smooth and the pitch marks are in the right place, we're not going to spend time completely fine-tuning every millimeter of this sleeve because we're doing this for a fitting. The accuracy that is required during a fitting, while it is high, is not exactly the same as that of a finished jacket. Plus, we know that we're going to recut these sleeves anyway. So. I'm not giving you a license to do messy work. I'm just telling you um, how to look at this and put things in context appropriately so that you spend your energy or save your energy wherever necessary. Again, no steam, no water, just a dry press. That should tell you exactly which areas have too much, which areas need a bit more. And if you see that your canvas is starting to go flat on you, just crease it again to have that out of the way once the sleeve is basted around the armhole so that it doesn't distort the roll of the sleeve. Okay, so I have to be careful here. There is a lot going on and I do not want to have any pleats here. And in some sense, always having a slightly bigger sleeve than necessary during fittings gives you the knowledge and the reference of how much every fabric can really take up, you know, the maximum level of ease that they, the fabric can take up um, before it starts to turn into puckers. And that's good because that means that you're never scared of too much fullness and you know exactly how much fullness a cloth can take so that you always end up with a rich sleeve that is full with a beautiful and elegant roll and not something that's too tight, um, you know, and lacking sole so to speak. So there's definitely too much here and even though I'm trying to press it, it's, it's, it's giving me a tough time. So maybe it's best to skip this area or just use the point of my iron and do the rest. I'm gonna leave this part. So I've pressed the rest. Let's see how the sleeve looks on the back, on the front. So the back looks pretty neat. It looks kind of like pretty smooth and I could probably get a little bit more here. So if I have too much here and I can't get it anywhere else, I could lose it by distributing it more towards the back. Let's first get everything in place. So obviously there is too much here. And now that I've pressed this area, I can see that it probably, I can do a little bit more towards the bottom, but I shall also put a little bit towards here. So. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of this towards the back. That means that my top pitch mark, and this is where it's handy to, to have something like this, can move back probably by an eighth, giving me in total an eighth extra here and an eighth less here. And so that should do the trick, okay? Let's do that and then hold it up and evaluate. As I said, my top pitch can go a little bit towards the back, so I can snip here. Let's say this is where we are now, and I'm going to bring it here. So move this over from here to here. So that gives us an eighth extra, which we can distribute in this part. And we really don't need any more than that. Just make sure that your runs are matching. Yeah, that's fine. And now we have opened up some space because it's all very flat here for this to go a little bit higher. And I'm going to go through exactly the same procedure as I did in redistributing it. So start a little bit further from the back. Back pitch stays in the same place. So I'll just start from the back pitch and take this thread out. I can even snip it away distribute what I have between my pin and the back pitch and then do the same on the front. So now that I've got here, this entire top area is fully flat. I can just take this pin out and allow maybe for a little bit more distribution since I can. 
And so now I have a little bit more room to distribute this upwards. And everything is now seemingly in sync. I don't have any excess to distribute here, so I'll just go over my previous basting for a few stitches and do a back tack just above my front pitch. Now, if you end up with too many back tacks here and there, what I suggest you do is once you've got the distribution that you like, just do one whole new run from the front all the way around with a single thread and remove all the other threads once you've done that base, okay? It's easier for, you know, when you have to take the sleeves out, you don't have to unpick 20 different points. So let's uh, press this and then evaluate this on the hand. Let's hold this up and have a look. So just like we did with the left sleeve, I want you to be aware of how you're holding the shoulders, okay? So don't just throw it on your hands like this. Be aware that your hands should open the armhole and the shoulder area as if it's mimicking a body that fills up that space, okay? So once you're holding it up correctly, you're going to look at the most important things. The front pitch. Is that of the sleeve matching to that of the armhole? If so, look at the back pitch. Is that of the sleeve, that's the hind arm seam, matching to that of the armhole? If so, perfect. What's the next step? Ease distribution in those areas, okay? So even though I haven't based it around the armhole, the sleeve looks fairly smooth. So if I go with my hands over this area and I don't get any twists, as I showed you with the left sleeve, so if you don't get something like this and it just actually looks very smooth, that's good. If you do get those diagonal twists, it probably means that the area between the front side, the front pitch on the front side, and the base of the armhole on the sleeve is a little tight. So you may need a little bit more fullness in the sleeve in this area, okay? Besides that, we're gonna look at the smoothness all around, okay? I've already told you these sleeves are bigger than they are gonna be in the final jacket. But regardless of that, your distribution has to be as even as possible. So when I look at the back, even though I have some of these wave here, they are fairly evenly distributed. It's not like the top is flat and then I've got a lot going on here, okay? Also, you have quite a lot of layers in the hindarm seam just above the back pitch in your sleeve. Now, below that area, you have nothing. So if you do get a blip right below your hindarm seam on your sleeve, it's okay. It's because of the discrepancy between the layer thickness and once we finish the sleeve, the sleeve heads and the openly pressed seams are gonna smooth that out, okay? So nothing to worry about. Then we're gonna look at, of course, where the sleeve should hang. Now, at the moment, I'm holding it like this. If I hold it like this to just fill up the neck area and I allow the front to hang naturally and I release the sleeve, that sleeve should more or less be in line with the pitch mark that we have here, which indicates the hang of the sleeve. Now, as I said, this pitch mark is useless until you have actually evaluated the jacket on the individual wearing the jacket, which is what we're gonna do in a moment. I'm gonna base it around the armhole of the right sleeve. So, thread your needle, make a knot, and make sure that everything is positioned towards the sleeves. So, your shoulder pad, all your inlays, all your canvas layers, everything is positioned correctly towards the sleeve. No twists, nothing, okay? Now, this is the right sleeve, and if you're right-handed, it's a lot easier to just start from the back and move towards the front, as long as you make sure that your shoulder seam is not distorted towards the back. It should follow this natural forwards curve as one smooth line, okay? Maybe you're working in a place and the tailor tells you, you always have to go from the back to the front, or from the front to the back. It's nonsense. As long as your fabric is not distorted and you are comfortable holding this and you are aware of all the layers and how they are positioned, you can start either from the front, move towards the back, or start from the back, move towards the front. In this case, 
it's more practical for me to hold it like this, start from the back and move towards the front, and that's what I'm going to do. So, where is your shoulder pad? Start right from there, again, as close as you can to the sleeve seam, back tack once, go through the pad, catch as much as pad as you can, and move towards the front. Now, if you notice, I'm not pulling anything, I'm not clearing anything, I'm just allowing the fabric to lay naturally, and I'm just securing it to the pad. Don't pull too hard to crush this area, okay? And always hold it in a curve. Don't hold it too flat, just hold it in a nice gentle curve. Now, when you baste around the armhole, what will happen is the holding down of the fabric against the pad and the canvas will actually reveal how much excess your sleeve has or whether the distribution is as neat as you thought it was. Because when it's not attached, what will happen is the fabric of the body will move slightly around and the sleeve will look smoother than it may actually be. So it's really once you secure the armholes that you get to see whether your sleeve is set in correctly and beautifully. Now, another thing that I would like to mention is you remember how we created this forwards curve. It was because our shoulder seam on the back was concave and our shoulder seam on the front was convex. So we created a curved seam. If your seam is straight, you cannot create this curve by just yanking the shoulder end forwards and then securing it. What you will do is you're going to create so much distortions and surpluses here that by the time you're done with your shoulders, it's going to look very, very ugly. So if you are working on a jacket that has straight shoulder seams, don't think for a second that you can create this forwards curve by just pulling your fabric towards the front. That's not how it works, my friend. Again, move the jacket at all times to be comfortable. While you can put this on a sleeve board, I recommend you hold it in your hands because it gives you better control and feel for where the layers of the canvas are, whether they are folded above or below uh, the shoulder pad, and it gives you just a little bit more control over your work. And you can see my stitch length is about 3 eighths and my bite size is also about 3 eighths. Now, another thing is also that when you're doing this area below, try not to have the fabric, you know, folded downwards. It really should lay flat, just like this. And that's the end of the canvas, more or less. So I'll do three back tags here, two, three. All right, so now that I've done this and we've gone through all the evaluations of our sleeves, it's time to do a final evaluation, the most important evaluation, and that is the jacket on me, just to check the sleeves. I'm going to roll the sleeves of my shirt down so that it doesn't get in the way of the elbows, put the jacket on, and go through a few points that you should always be aware of. It's time to evaluate some sleeves, but before I go through each point, I want to bring your attention to something very important. This is the first time in this entire course that I'm wearing the traditional model with sleeves. You might be tempted to pause the video or during my explanations, look at everything else but the sleeves. However, I want you to focus only on the sleeves, okay? Now, if you followed the lessons with our purple box or the pattern that's available on our website and you've gone through all the lessons, made the jacket up and I would take the jacket and put it on, this is probably how the jacket that you've made would look on me. This is how the traditional model fits me at its first stage. I say first stage because in the next lesson, which is a bonus lesson, we are going to make a few minor adjustments to a few parts of the sleeves and the body of the jacket before we finish it. Okay? Having said that, many of you might have had plenty of other issues with sleeves, very complicated things regarding cutting and making. I cannot put everything in a short evaluation, okay? So the purpose of this lesson, as I said in the beginning, is for you to master ease distribution, okay? Are you ready? Let's begin. 
I have two main points and two general observations for you to pay attention to. Point number one, your pitch marks, the front pitch and the back pitch, should be perfectly matching. Why? Because if you match those points, the sleeves will hang correctly. Once you've matched those points perfectly, the second point that I want you to pay attention to is how you have distributed the ease between those two points. Now, as I've already said, the sleeves are a bit bigger than they should be. However, that should not take away from the hang of the sleeves. How do you know that the sleeves are too big? Well, you see these surpluses on the fronts? That indicates that the fabric has been compressed to its max. It cannot take any more fullness and therefore results in these waves. What you should look for is that these waves are evenly distributed from the front pitch to the back pitch. So if you're looking at the jacket and the front is flat, but all the fullness is all the way to the back, that's not correct. Okay, so those are the two main points. Apart from that, if I just turn around and show you the side of the sleeves, you can see that the sleeves are hanging very comfortably. They're not like this. They're not like this. There's no twist in the sleeves. It's just a little too full. And if I swing my arm and just let it rest, it also matches to the pitch mark that we have below here, which indicates where the forearm seam should hang. As I mentioned in the previous lesson, this mark is based on the most forward point of the armhole, the front side, straight down, and that is usually where the majority of people have their wrists, okay? So I'm going to turn around for you to have a look at the sleeves from the side, from the back. Now you have to ignore the collapsing at the armpits on the body. We're going to address that in the next lesson. But if you look at the sleeves, there's nothing much happening. It's just hanging down. The right sleeve is very similar, okay? And that's it. Now. I have two observations, general observations that I want you to pay attention to. The first one is that if the sleeves are cut correctly and they have been sewn incorrectly, whether they are too big or too small, the front roll right here should be continuing all the way down to the forearm seam. Okay? You see this on both sleeves. This roll just continues to the forearm seam. That's first observation. Second observation is that if a sleeve is cut incorrectly or sewn incorrectly and the distribution of ease or the pitch marks are in the wrong place, the slightest amount of movement of the arms completely shows the, the sleeves as a twist. In our case, because the pitch marks are in the right place and the distribution of ease is fairly even, if I move my arms forwards, you just see a very natural, neat break on the front. If I move them backwards, you see a neat break on the back. And if I move them sideways, you just see a nice, even break just below where the shoulder pad is on top of my shoulder. Okay, that's it. That's really the evaluation that I want you to pay attention to for now. And as we progress with the next lessons, I will unpack the remainder of sleeves. As for now, this is it. And that was sleeves. I don't know how you experienced the entire lesson, but I felt during the lessons that it was all a bit too simple. We only had to match a pitch mark and do some ease distribution. Now, you might wonder, why did he give us sleeves that are bigger and why is he emphasizing so much on the distribution of ease? This is the reason. When you are forced to play around with distribution of fabric, you get to learn the capacity that the fabric has. Now, in our case, it's linen. But if you do this with multiple fabrics, you build up references in your mind of how far this fabric can be pushed in terms of compression. Why is this important? Well, you want your sleeves to look full and crafted as if from some material like porcelain or marzipan, as some would like to call it. It should look sculpted, okay? And you can never get to that point if all you've been doing was putting sleeves with no ease. You never learn what the cloth can take and you're always going to be scared of any little surplus around that armhole or around that sleeve. 
The only reason that I can now explain these things and break them up and go through them step by step with you is not because I was trained with perfect sleeves. When I was doing my apprenticeship on Savile Row, I got sleeves without a pitch mark on the body, without a pitch mark on the front, without a pitch mark on the back. I didn't even know what the starting point was of the sleeve. Can you imagine what kind of a disaster that is? And so, in some sense, I had to reinvent the entire concept of sleeves for myself, which is a bit sad because, you know, before me, for thousands of years, people have been making jackets and suits and garments with sleeves. And so now here I am, I have to reinvent everything. But at the same time, it was really good because I understood everything at the most fundamental level. I had a lot of questions about it. And so that caused me to research and research and research. So for now, I hope that you can appreciate my concern with you mastering ease distribution for the reasons that I explained. In our next lesson, for which I'm very excited about, we are going to make a few minor adjustments. While it's okay for you to go through an entire course and make a perfect jacket, I really want you to learn every bit that you can from each stage. This is a base fitting, so it would be good to treat it as a fitting. I've introduced a few minor faults into the pattern of the body. The sleeves are a bit bigger as well. So I'm going to go through them in the next lesson, fit the jacket as if I'm the customer and you've made something for the customer. And so make those minor adjustments, show to you how to bring them on paper, and then of course make them on the actual jacket. That will prepare it for module two in which we're going to finish the jacket. My name is Reza, Mowgli behind the camera, and we look forward to seeing the next lesson. Take care. Who beginning all take the outros? And that was sleeves. So beginning all take toch. And that was sleeves. So beginning done. Yeah. So this is what we're gonna do. First, I'm going to talk you through the basics. Blah 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 blah.